That was three songs and a poem and a prayer. No. God don't always do things the same way. Amen. Hallelujah. And thank God for that. Amen. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. I tell you what, I was studying last night and digging into the Word. I realized something. I've been reading the Bible, the King James Version, since I was about five years old. And that's been a few years ago. Amen. Amen. And there is still nothing that I have ever found that excites me more than God's Word. Come on. Amen. Come on. There's still nothing that can stir my heart and my spirit like God's Word. Amen. Brother. Say, Brother Billy, if you've been reading that thing for 40 years, don't you know it all yet? Oh, not by far. Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. I learn something new all the time. My, my, my. Haven't yet arrived, but I'm on my way. The Word of God still stirs my heart. Amen. The Word of God still turns me on. Amen. It still, my goodness, gives me goosebumps. Amen. Hallelujah. I fell in love with it a long time ago. Hallelujah. I love it. Not as much as I used to, but more than I used to. Amen. The older I get, the more important I realize it is to me. Amen. Hallelujah. The older, the older I get, the more I realize how important the Word of God is. Hallelujah. And you'll find that in your life as well. Because once you've been down the road a few miles, you'll find out that there's a lot of friends you thought you could count on. They ain't there no more. Once you've been down the road a few miles, you'll learn that there's a lot of religious people you know that you thought you could count on and they ain't there no more. Maybe the things that you thought was true so many years, it ain't so stable anymore. Amen. But my, 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 you will find one thing constant. Amen. Never changing. Always the same. The Word of God. Amen. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. I've known a lot of people in my walk. Amen. I've known a lot of people that I thought a lot of and I thought would never turn their back on me, but they did. Amen. A lot of people that I thought would stick with me to the end and they didn't stick very long. But Jesus has always been there. Amen. I've always always been able to count on His Word. Amen? That's the kind of God that I serve. Yes. You can stand yes. upon His Word today. Yes, sir. Amen? Guaranteed. You can stand on His Word. Yes. You know, a lot of times people will come and they'll try to get you to invest in something and they'll say, right. I guarantee you this is going to do good. I get, this is a, a no-fail plan that I'm trying to get you to invest yes. in. Well, I've got a no-fail plan for you to invest in today. Amen? Yeah. The Word of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's been tried. It's been tested. It's been true. Amen. It was there in the beginning. It will be there in the end. Amen? Yes, sir. Jesus said that heaven and earth will pass away, but my Word shall not pass away. Amen? Yeah. Come on. His Word shall remain. And guess what? That's what we've been talking about yes, sir. for a few services. Amen? Hallelujah. We've been talking about God's Word. Yeah. And as I thought about the different sermons and the different people that God has pointed out to us in the history of the Bible that who put their faith in God's Word. and yeah. I'm not going to name them off all here today because you know who we've talked about. We've talked about the woman with the issue of blood. We've talked about the widow woman with the barrel and of meal and the little bit of oil. And we've talked about a lot of different people who simply put their trust in God, simply decided they were going to choose to believe what thus saith God instead of what thus saith man. Amen. See, we're, we're faced with a choice today and every day to believe God or to believe man. Amen. Right. To believe God or to believe what we see with our natural eyes. To look through the eyes of faith and believe that God will do what He said He would do even though it seems like all hell is against it. It seems like the world has thrown everything at you but the kitchen sink and sometimes the sink. Amen. But to stand and realize I choose. I know I can choose to turn back, but I ain't nothing to turn back to. Amen. I choose to trust God and His Word today. Hallelujah. And we've learned about some people like that. Yes, sir. We've learned about people like Joshua who believed God when he said, March around the wall seven times. Yeah. Blow the trumpets. Shout. Let the yeah. priests bear the ark. And I'll bring the walls down. Come on. And Joshua trusted, not in the priest, not in the ark, not in the people, not in the shout, but in God's word. Come on. Amen. 
We've read about people. We've learned about people's lives that they yes. have simply put their faith and trust in God's Word. Yes, sir. If you put your faith in God's Word today, your trust, you will not be disappointed. Amen. Amen. So I kind of feel like Paul in starting out yes. this morning in Hebrews the 11th chapter and right. the 32nd verse. Hebrews the 11th chapter is full of what we call Bible history. Amen. Paul is giving an account here of people who lived by faith. Yeah. People that were brought through trials and people who staggered not like Abraham. Who staggered not at the promise of God. Yeah. When he took little Isaac up the mountain there mm -hmm. and he knew God was going to make a way. Because he had faith yeah. in His righteousness and all. Because he had faith in the Come righteous on. words of a righteous Come God. On. That He would do what He said He would do. Whenever He told him that He would make His seed as the sand of the sea or the stars of the heaven. Yeah. And that that seed would come through Isaac. And it oh. hadn't happened yet. So Abraham simply said... Well, well, you know what? I'm just going to trust God. Amen? Yes, I'm going to believe God is going to provide Himself a lamb. Praise the Lord. So, Paul's talking about a lot of different people and their faith that they had. Yeah. And he gets to this place in the 32nd verse. He's given example after example. This way I felt last night as I was going over some of the notes that we preached on the last three or four weeks concerning the Word of God and the way that it has worked and manifested itself in the lives of people who have put their faith in God's Word. And Paul comes to this, and this is the way I felt. And what shall I say more? For the time would fail me. And that's kind of the way I feel. <laughs> what shall I say? What else can I say because I don't have enough time? Yeah. And Paul says, what shall I say more? For the time would fail me Come on. to tell of Gideon and of Barak, and, and that ain't Obama either, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, yeah. and of David, and of Samuel, and of the prophets. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm about, I, I've, I've exhausted my time that I have here to, to expound upon this, and I still haven't scratched the surface. And that's the way I feel. We've preached sermon after sermon about the power of God's Word. Yeah. And about how if you'll put your faith in it, if you'll put your trust in it, if you'll build your life upon it, and I still feel like we haven't scratched the surface. Amen. 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 And that's the way the Apostle Paul felt here. Yeah. He said, and time's running out on me. He said, but time would fail me to tell you all of the situations that these people went through. Come on. He says, who through faith subdued kingdoms. Mm -hmm. They wrought righteousness. They obtained promises. They stopped the mouths of lions. Yeah. They quenched the violence of fire. They escaped the edge of the sword. Mm -hmm. Out of weakness they were made strong. They waxed valiant in fight. Yeah. They turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Mm -hmm. He ain't done yet. Listen church. Women received their dead raised to life again. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Women received their dead. You yeah. remember the woman that had the son that died, and she went running to the prophet. Yeah. And she said, I believe it was Elisha. Mm -hmm. Elisha saw this little woman running. Yeah. See, Elisha, God had spoken the word through him. Yeah. This woman's household had been blessed. Mm -hmm. And she had a son, and now he goes out to the field one day and says, Daddy, my head's hurting. Falls over, pack him back to Mama, he dies. She says, take him up and lay him in the prophet's room. <laughs> lay him in the room I prepared for the prophet. Amen? Take him up there and lay him on the bed of the prophet. Yeah. Oh, what? Why? Why not just take him to the graveyard and shove him in a hole because she was standing on God's Word. Amen? I realize there are situations in your life that the devil or your flesh will tell you you might as well give up and let go. But you better hang on and hold on to God's Word because if He said He'd do it, He'd do it. Come on, preach. She said, take him up there. Lay him on the bed of the anointed man of God. Yes, sir. I'm fixing to go fetch him. Yes. I'm fixing to go fetch him. Praise the Lord. This woman <laughs> saw, she had so much faith in that God was going to do what He said He would do. Yeah. She says, you saddle and ask, you get things ready, and if I get tired, you stop and I'll ride. But in the meantime, I'm going to run. Mm -hmm. Amen? So she takes off running toward where the prophet's at. And Elisha's up there. Was it Gehazi? I was his servant. He looks out there and he says, wait, I see somebody coming. You know what I think he probably saw? Do you remember in old cowboy movies you used to watch? Yeah. 
they'd be, they'd, they'd be up in the hills and they'd be looking to see if the posse was very close behind. Oh, and they'd see a cloud of dust out there somewhere. <laughs> Amen. Come and it let them know there's a cloud of dust so there's a posse coming. Come on. I believe Elias looked out across the horizon, Brother David, That's right. and he saw a cloud of dust. Yeah. It wasn't no past posse. It's that little woman that had her faith in God's Word that had her dead son laying up in the prophet's room and she wasn't going to take no for an answer. She's stirring up a dust. She's running fast as she can. Come on, and he says, you're going to see what she wants. Yeah. I, believe it's that, you know, I believe it's that little woman. Yeah. Not a little woman. I believe it's that little woman that I helped. I believe it's that little woman that I helped. Mm -hmm. You're going to find out. That's the one that took care of me. Yeah. See, it do you some good. Mm -hmm. Take care of the man of God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Come on. Say it. Slip in my hand every now and then. See if God don't bless you. Come on. Say it. She had fixed him a place for him to sleep. <laughs> yes. Took care of him. Fed him. Come on. So... He says, you're going to see what she wants. Yeah. And Gehazi, he goes down there. Uh -huh. Woman, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? Mm -hmm. So I had her a widow while ago. She had a husband. Yeah. <laughs> uh, easy to get these women mixed up because right. this woman that Elisha dealt with and the woman that Elijah dealt with that was a widow had a lot of things in common. Yeah. Most important thing was their faith. Right. Yeah. Their faith. Amen. Come on. He says, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Yeah. Is it well with the child? Come on. And she don't say, oh, gloom, despair, and agony on me. Yeah. She says, it is what well. Is How does she say that? Because she had faith in God's Word. Yeah. She had faith in God's Word. Come on. She believed, she chose to believe that God would fulfill what He had promised He would do. Yeah. To stand upon His Word. Mm -hmm. His promise that He had given. Come on. This is my promise, God. Yeah. This is what You gave me. Come on. And I ain't going to let the enemy or doubt take it away. Come on. Mm -hmm. So what she do? She goes to the man of God and she Praise pleads with Him. And He goes. And the Bible says He goes up. And I believe it goes up and He stretches out on the child maybe three times. Yeah. Hand, arm to arm, hand to hand. Praise the Lord. And what happens? God brings the little boy back to life. Why? Because of God's Word that cannot fail. If you will stand on God's Word, it cannot, it is impossible. It is impossible for God to lie. It is God is a God of integrity. And He will not let His Word fail. It will accomplish that which He sends it to do. If David Fitzgerald will stand on God's Word and His promises, God will not fail. As long as your faith is in Him and right, what He has told you, God will not fail. And I know we don't understand these kind of things. That's why Isaiah had to pin these words from God in Isaiah 55 and 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. It tickles me, men and women that think they really understand everything about God. Yeah. I'm sorry, but you don't. That's Amen? Right. I'm sorry, but you never will. Amen? Amen. Right. There are things that we will never know until we cross over Amen. to the other side. Come on. I know we want all the answers in this life. We ain't going to have all the answers in this life. I don't understand everything. You, you don't understand everything. You ain't going to understand everything because His ways right. are higher than our ways. Amen? Amen. His thoughts. Right. They are not our thoughts. Come on. And he says, For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Come on. So shall my word be yeah. that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, yeah. but it shall accomplish that which I please. Yeah. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Amen. He said, as the snow and the rain...
comes down from heaven come and returns not thither. Now I realize that water evaporates and I realize all the clouds and all that stuff, but how many people in here every day ever seen it rain backwards? How about snow? Did you ever get up one morning and look out and see the snow instead of come, coming down is going up? Impossible. Because once it comes down, it's against all the laws of nature and all the laws of physics for it to return back up in the same form that it was. Amen? In the same form that it was when it left the clouds. Hallelujah. Same thing with God's Word. It is against the spiritual laws of God for His Word to return empty handed. Did you hear what He said? He said, My Word is the same way. When I send it forth, it will accomplish that which I send it forth to do. He's talking about you, brother. Rod. Come on. He's talking about in our lives. Right. When He speaks the Word into our lives, and He has. Yes. Genesis to Revelation belongs to you. Yes. Don't let nobody tell you Come any on. different. Amen? Come on. I realize that back in the 1500s and before that, Come on. The Catholic Church thought it was theirs. Amen? Yeah. The priest, anyway, and the bishops and the Pope. But it, it ain't theirs. Amen? Yeah, this God. Word was given to man by God. And it Come cannot on. be stopped. Come on, brother Billy. It cannot be stopped. Come on, exhort it. It cannot be stopped. Amen. Come on, say it. Paul would say it like this in 2 Timothy 2 and 9. Yes. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer. Yeah. Even unto bonds. He's telling, listen, I've, I've been treated as somebody that's doing evil. I've been put into prison. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't stop there, Brother Sleece. He says, but the word of God is not bound. All right. Did you hear that? Amen. You can put old Paul in prison, oh, but it don't on. stop God's word. Come on. Amen. Come on. Exhort. Scholars will tell you, and you can find bits and pieces of this in the Word of God yeah. that teach us that everywhere Paul went, mm -hmm. people got saved. Yeah. Amen. Because he never stopped. If he went to prison, he preached to the <laughs> cellmates. Yeah. Amen. Right. And to the prison guards. Oh, Amen. Yeah. There was no stop. He said, you lock me up. Yeah. You put me in bonds. You can put me in chains, but the Word of God yeah. is not, cannot, will not, yeah. shall not be bound. That's right, brother. Can't be. Come on, exhort it. Cannot be bound. Amen. Yeah. There is no way yeah. to bind God. You remember what they did with him and Silas? They put him in the Philippian yeah. jail and at midnight. Right. They start worshiping and praising God. And guess what? God's Word shakes the very foundation of the prison. Right. They put Him in there to shut Him up. And what's He do? Yeah. He gets the Philippian jailer and his household saved. Right. You God. cannot bind the Word of God. Amen. You cannot stop. Paul had seen oh, this firsthand because he had tried to stop it. Come on, preach to us. Yeah. Come on. Paul had seen this. For, he knew what he's talking about because he'd been on both sides of the spectrum. Yeah. He had tried to stop God's Word. Yeah. He'd kill one Christian, three more pop up. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Sort of like getting, trying to get rid of weeds out there in your garden or your driveway. You get rid of them. Two or three, and the next day there's five or six of them there. Amen. Yeah. Every time Paul thought he had a handle and he had his hand around the, the stranglehold on the church, yeah. another group of them would pop up somewhere else and begin preaching the Word of God. Paul said, you can't bind it. You can't kill it. You can't burn it. You can't destroy it. I've tried. Yeah. Uh, Come on, brother. That's good. You ever heard the old world is saying, if you can't beat them, join them? Yeah. Maybe that was some of the Apostle Paul's thinking, forget this stuff. Yeah. I'm on the wrong side. Yeah. The more I try to kill them, the stronger they get. Exhort. The more I try to get rid of them, the more of them there is. Yeah, exhort them. Oh, my Lord and my God. Come on. So Paul knew what he's talking about. Yeah. He had tried, but to no avail. Yeah. Every time he killed one, three more pop up. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. While he's in prison, he'd tell it to the prisoners. While he was in prison, he'd tell it to the guards. Come he on. was seeing people say, why? Because no matter where, listen. You can take the Word of God yeah. and you can put it on an island, mm -hmm. listen, in the Aegean Sea, an island called Patmos, yeah. Yeah. to try and shut it up. Yeah. Yeah. I know what we'll do with it. He's the only one left. We'll take the Word of God, we'll put it out here on this rock pile in the middle of this ocean, and there ain't no way anything's going to come of it then. Then John the Revelator would say, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and Jesus Christ Himself appeared unto me and gave me the revelation, the unveiling of Jesus. And He'd begin to write to the churches. And the words that John wrote then, we've still got today. That's it, brother. 
And all of those those smart guys that tried to stop him are dead and gone. Yeah. Come on. And God's word still Come lives. On. Come on, brother Billy. Nero that chopped Paul's head off. Yeah. He's dead and gone. That's right. He's in hell today. God's word still alive. That's it, brother. Amen. Praise God. All of the people that have tried to stop God's word. That's right. Amen. That's right. Come on. Do you realize in the early 1500s? Come on. Whenever John Wycliffe started to translate into English the scripture so that the common man could have them. Yeah. Do you realize that the established religion at that time, the Catholicism, mm -hmm. they were so upset mm -hmm. that and he didn't really get all the way through the Bible. He got the entirety of the New Testament translated and he got about half or so. Come on. Depending on which scholar you talk to or, or read. Uh, he got about half of the Old Testament. Yeah. But what he did have and was being distributed, mm -hmm. the Catholic Church and the powers that be, yeah. and don't get any other thought, the Catholic Church ruled the powers that be at that time. Oh, Amen. Yes. They were hand in hand. They was in bed together. Yes, sir. Amen. That's it. They said, we'll pay money uh -huh. if you'll bring any, you can get your hands on, mm -hmm. any of those, any of the pages that he's translated. Come on. Anything that he has translated into English, if you will bring it to us so we can burn it, we'll pay you money. Yeah. So what they do, they begin to pay people money. People begin to look. People begin to, because nothing talks any more louder to people than money. Amen. Right. You heard that old saying, money talks? Yeah. Well, it usually says goodbye at my house, but it does say hello to some people. Amen. Right. And they were looking for a way to make money. Yeah. And they went around, they said, oh, there's one of those, there's some of that scripture that Wycliffe's been working uh -huh. on. Let's take it to the bishop and he'll give us some money for it. Yeah. So what they do? They gather up everything they can find, at least, at least what they can lay their hands on. Right. And guess what happens? They take it to them, they pay them money. Mm -hmm. But the more they pay them, the more they burn, yeah. the more this thing spreads. Yeah. It leaves them scratching their head trying to, I don't understand this. Yeah. Oh, I know what we have to do then. Come on. We finally got to get a hold of Wycliffe and kill him. Yeah. That's Amen. It. That's it. <clears throat> we finally got to get a hold of Tyndale. Oh, come on. We finally get a, got to get a hold of Tyndale. Come on, I said Wycliffe, but it was Tyndale. Mm -hmm. We finally got to get, because see, he used some of Wycliffe's material. Uh, we we got to get a hold of Tyndale and his writings and his translations. We, we've been destroying his papers. Yeah. And seem like the more we burn, the more they show up somewhere else. Yeah. So we got to get a hold of him. So you know what they do? They send one of his close friends, offer him some money. Yeah. Money talks. That's Nobody, right, hey, you, nothing calls your friends do you any more wrong than whatever it has to do with money. Amen. That's right, brother. And your family. So, so they, your family too, brother. So they send him in there, and they, and you know his friend, he's a yeah. friendly comrade, and he talks William Tyndale into going on a Sunday stroll with him. Yeah. And as they go along, there's guards in waiting, and they get a hold of him. Oh, come on. And the powers that be strangle him to death and burn him at the stake. Yeah. And then they think, well, that's it. Come on, brother. That's all that's going to be done with that. We've yeah. stomped it out. Come on. Yeah. Till a king by the name of, name of James, amen, in the year 1604. Come on. Come on. <laughs> God moves upon the throne of where else than England, amen. <laughs> One of the, the last thing that the, some of the people remember, Tyndale, the, some of the la one of the last words they remember him speaking was God... Save the King of England. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Oh, I don't know whether old King James was saved or not, or even if he knew what he was doing, but God knew what he was doing. Amen. All right. Wouldn't be the first time he used the devil to do the work. Amen. Amen. So he moves upon the king. Yeah. And he says, "Okay, we need a, mm -hmm. we need a good translation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we need a good translation in the English language." Yeah. So he gets together all these scholars, about fifty or sixty of them. He says, you boys take these transcripts and you take these the originals and you take it and you get us the best and the closest thing you got. And you know what we wound up with today? About 90% of William Tyndale's work oh, why? is in this book. Amen. <laughs> they pay people money to burn his papers. They finally get a hold of him, strangle him to death, burn him at the stake as if, I guess, they thought strangling him wasn't good enough. They thought he may not be dead. Let's yeah. burn him. Uh -huh. 
So they do all of that to stomp yeah. him out. And today, the year of 2012, mm -hmm. I stand here in a little storefront church in Livermore, Kentucky with his work in my hand. Yes, sir. Praise you God. cannot stop Praise the Word of God. God. Amen. Praise it has been God. preserved from generation to generation. It is yeah. God's holy Word. Right. You cannot stop it. Come on, Lord. So what did people do? Have they learned their lesson? No. Them stupid leaders over in Iran says, go gather up all the Bibles you can find. We're going to burn them. And they really think they're doing something. But I got news for them. They can burn them until they run out of matches and God's Word will still remain. You can't kill it. You can't stop it. On, it's brother. God's Word. Come on, preach it. Government can't stop it. Nations can't stop That's it. The right. Catholic Church couldn't stop it. That's right. Amen. God's Word is still alive today. It is still as real today as it ever has been. Right. Jesus said the words that I speak are spirit and they are life. Right. When God speaks it into existence, it becomes. There's no way to stop it. Yeah. You cannot keep it from happening. I told you before, the only way you can keep God's Word from coming into fruition in your life is if you stop it. That's it the devil can't stop it. That's None of his demons can stop it. Right. If you'll stand on God's Word, like I said about that little widow woman that left the fence to go get that little cake to feed it to the prophet, as long as she stood on God's Word, there was nobody that was going to cause them to starve to death. There was, no, there was no force. There was no force of nature. Because yeah. nature has to obey the yeah. Word of God. We've already we talked about that before. When God says peace be still, the, the storm has to shut up. Amen? When God speaks to the Red Sea and says step aside and make us a dry place to walk, the Red Sea has to stand up like a wall. Amen? And prepare a path for God's people to go across. God's Word is that powerful. Come on. He sent His Word to heal yes, he did. your disease. That's right. He sent His Word to Come save on. us. Come on. Jesus said, I've come to seek and to save that which was lost. What was Jesus? He was the Word that it became flesh. Amen? Yes. We read over there in the book of Revelations where it says when He comes back, when John saw heaven open, yes. and the rider that came forth with a vesture that had been yes. dipped in blood said His name was the Word of God. Yes. You can't stop God's Word. Amen. I'm trying to tell you, there's no other foundation you can build on in this world Come on. that is solid as the Word of God. Come on, exhort it. Nothing else will be standing. Heaven and earth will pass away. That's right. Everything that you see will pass away except right. God's Word will remain. Amen. Forever. Forever. And ever. And ever. There's no stopping. If I'd had time this morning, yeah. which I've already about exhausted all of my time, I was going to read to you about Paul when he stood before King Agrippa. And he began to give his testimony. Yeah. I believe it was Acts the 26th chapter. And he was giving his testimony and he was expounding on what God had done. Mm -hmm. And of course, as Paul always did, talked about the Word of God and shared with the King the Word of God and testified and standing there trying to win the soul of the King. Mm -hmm. And as he thus spake for himself, Festus that stood by there, said with a loud voice, I'm in Acts 26 and 24, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make you mad. Yeah. Doth make thee mad. But Paul said, I'm not mad, most noble Festus. Come on. Well, that really gets you enemies right there, don't it? Yes, sir. They expect you to pop off and call them names, but whenever you say, excuse me, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> most noble Festus. <laughs> Come on. Oh, Paul has this to say. I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of these things, before whom I also speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For these things were not done in a corner. All right. That's really what I want to talk about. Amen. I want to talk about how we keep God in a box and let him out when it's convenient for us. Yes. Amen. Amen. I want to talk about how that we need people like Paul that are not afraid to stand before yeah. the leaders of the nation and proclaim the Word of God as being the Word of God. On, we need pastors and preachers exhort who won't us. just say it in their pulpit, but when they get on Larry King Live, won't back down from the truth and they will say God's Word, say it, so that settles it. There's no change in it. Glory to God. We need pastors with enough backbone to stand up and say, God yeah. said it. I didn't write it. God wrote it. That settles it. I can't change it. Come on. 
Not somebody that'll say, well, that's the way I believe. No, that's the way God said it. Right. We need people in our colleges right. that will stand in the midst of those learned men and men of degree that say we yeah. came from monkeys. Come on. And will say, well, excuse me, most noble professor. Yeah. But I believe in the beginning God. Amen. I don't believe in the monkey theory. I believe that God in the beginning spoke this world into existence and created man in his own image. Right. And I believe it because God said it and that settles it. Yes, sir. Amen. That's good preaching, brother. We need some people like Elijah. Yeah. When he was confronted by Ahab and Jezebel. Yeah. Said, I tell you what we do. Come on. We ain't gonna have no silent meeting at my house to decide who's God. We're gonna go up on Mount Carmel before all of the people. You gather wow. the 450 prophets of Baal and you create a you make an altar, and I'll make an altar for my God, and whoever's God will send the fire. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on. I'm talking about people that are proclaiming in public. It's one thing if you act holy in here. It's another thing on how you act when you go to work. Yes, sir. Yes, it Amen. Is. It is. And I ain't talking about if you go in there acting like holy Joe, but I'm talking about them people who know you're saved. Yeah. Then people will know you go to church. All right, brother. Then people will not be surprised when they find out you're an assistant pastor. <laughs> That's Amen. It. That's it. These people will not be surprised when they... You mean he's a preacher? Yeah. They ought not be shocked when they find out Sleece Butler goes to the Holy Roller Church by the post office. Amen. Right. They ought not be shocked whenever Brother David walks in over there to the schoolhouse. Well, I don't know whether he's saying, I don't know if he, that's a Christian man or not. They ought to know it that's because it. you proclaim it. Not even It doesn't even have to be so much with your mouth as it is with your actions that's and it. the way you live before them. Right. Come on. We need some people that ain't ashamed of Jesus. Amen. Good. We need some... Some people that ain't ashamed to say, I know Jesus and He knows me. I'm on my way to heaven and you want to go with me. Amen. We need some people that ain't ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come on, brother Billy. We need some people like Paul that are standing before the leaders. Elijah standing up on Mount Carmel. We need some people that are proclaiming from the housetops. We need some people that are going to their jobs and show forth the light of Jesus. We got enough of these Sunday morning Christians, amen, that, that are holy on Sunday morning and the rest of the week live like the devil, amen. We need somebody that will stand on God's Word. Listen, if it's worth believing, it's worth standing for, amen. It's worth putting your life out there on the line and saying, I believe. Hallelujah. What God said, I won't turn back Hallelujah. on it. We need some people in the post office when they're confronted yes. with things will say, I believe God. Uh -huh. I believe God. That's it, bro. Listen to me. I've had people exhorted. I've had people ask me for prayer uh -huh. in IGA, yeah. Walmart, yeah. parking lots, different places. And I know they thought All right. I was gonna go home and find me a closet Come on. and pray. Uh-huh. Because when I laid hands on them there in the parking lot, yeah. it looked like they wanted to find a rock to hide under. Yeah. Listen, I ain't ashamed. If you ain't ashamed Amen. to cuss in public, I ain't ashamed to pray Come in public. On. That's good. You hear what I said? That's good. If man. you ain't ashamed to sit there in the restaurant and drink your booze and tell dirty jokes, I ain't ashamed to join hands with my family, go on my head and say in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the food that's before me. I ask that you yeah. bless and sanctify it in oh. Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, if you ain't ashamed to cuss, I ain't ashamed to pray. Yeah. But that's what we got. Glory. We got people that ain't ashamed to cuss. They ain't ashamed to stand on the street corner half naked and holler I'm a homo. That's it. But we got Christians that are ashamed to proclaim they know Jesus Christ yeah. and the Word of God to be the truth. Yeah. Amen. Glory. We got homosexuals coming out of the closet to make room for the Christians that are going in. Glory. We need some people that are stand up and say, I am born again, bought by the blood of Jesus. Yeah. I'm saved, sanctified by the Word of God. And I believe that God said it. That settles it. Come on, brother. That's what we need. Y'all have to excuse me for getting this. I told you the Word of God excites me this yeah. morning. Amen. Yeah, Nothing. Yeah. Football don't do it for me like this. Yeah. Basketball don't do it for me. Yeah. You can have Kentucky in every game that comes yeah. before and, and is after. Amen. Yeah. But wow. give me the Word of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. The Word of God excites me this morning. Preach it. And we need some people that I get wrapped up enough in the Word of God. That's it, brother. And when you see them, yeah. it ain't all about sports and money. And, and drinking and fussing and cussing. Yeah. It's about, hey, guess what we learned in church this morning? Yes, sir. Amen. Come on. Guess what our pastor been preaching on? That's it, brother. Guess what I read in the Word this morning before I came to work? Say it. Amen. Amen. You go into work with them old boys and they ain't got no peace. Right. They're troubled on every hand. Right. You say, guess what I read this morning? Yeah. 
Yeah. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Come on, he can give you peace that passes all understanding. Yes, you know that peace you've been trying to find in the bottle? You can find it in the Bible. Amen. Yeah. You know that peace you've been trying to find in the needle? You can find it in the Bible. Amen. Yeah. You can find it in the Bible because these scriptures are those which testify of the risen Lord and Savior, the only God of heaven, Jesus Christ, and Him crucified. That's right, brother. Uh, I told you. I get excited. Go ahead, brother. Exhort it. And Paul said, listen, Agrippa. Yeah. This thing wasn't done in the corner. Mm -hmm. Let's let it out of the box. Yeah. Amen. Come on. God tired of us That's putting it. him in a box. Right. And you know how you do used to those jack in the box, you'd wind it when you wanted him to pop out. Yeah. That's what we do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When true. it's convenient for us, let's wind it up That's and let God true. out. Mm -hmm. All right. Makes me sick. Mm -hmm. That's right. Let's wind it. We don't don't do it this morning because we got visitors. Yeah. Let's don't let's don't talk about God when we're over to the convention center or wherever we're at mm -hmm. to the ball game mm -hmm. because you know they might think strange of us. Mm -hmm. This thing wasn't done in no corner. Mm -hmm. This thing's been shouted from the rooftops. Yeah. The word of God is not bound. It don't matter where you're at. If you're on the fish bank, if you're in the middle of Kentucky's ball game, right there in the midst of the crowd, if you're if you're in the church, no matter if you're in Walmart, it don't matter where you're at. God's word is still His will. It's still His truth. And if you'll share it with people, it will accomplish something. Come on, brother. It will accomplish something. That's it. That's Tell you how preaching. powerful God's Word is. That's good preaching. We watched a video sometime back. Uh -huh. I told you this before about this man mm -hmm. that was a drunk, yeah. rowdy, mm -hmm. got cut open in a bar uh, in a fight at a liquor store or somewhere. I don't know where he was at. Yeah. Rushed him into the emergency room and he died. Mm -hmm. Starts going down. Mm -hmm. Starts going to seek him to this black pit. Yeah. says he can hear all these noises and he can feel his heat. I don't know if you believe that kind of stuff or not, but I still believe hell's real. Amen. 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 And he said he never had been much of a Christian, didn't know a whole lot, but he remembered he went to school, Sunday school when he was a kid. Yeah. I'm talking about how powerful the Word of God is. That's right. Went to Sunday school whenever he was a kid and he remembered his teacher shared this little song with him. Mm. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. That's all he knew. Said he began to sing that song in the crowd in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And he felt himself come back up and go back into his body. All right. I'm talking about the power of the Word of God. Yeah. The very foundation of this world, the axis that it rests upon, yeah. is the Word of God. The Bible says for it, now we know that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. I was listening to the yeah. son of James Payne's testimony this morning on the radio station. Brother Mike played him on his broadcast this morning. And he was talking about how that when he went to a little vacation Bible school, his family didn't go to church. Yeah. He said, you know, he, he, they were poor, dirt poor. Yeah. He said, you know how some homes have a, two bedrooms and a bath? Yeah. They had two rooms and a path. Amen. Hey, went out to the outhouse. <laughs> But he talked about how that he just kept getting wilder and wilder. And he went to this, this uh, vacation Bible school, I think, and he was just being rowdy and all of that. And the teacher, I forgot what his name was, walked over and grabbed him up and said, James Payne, Jesus loves you. All right. Said he shrugged her off, uh, cussed, left, mm. thought that was it. Yeah. He said then after that, no matter how much he drank, no matter how much he fought, no matter how much he fussed as he got older, no matter how much he went out into the world, when he laid down at night, he could hear that Sunday school teacher saying, James Payne, Jesus loves you. Amen. I'm talking about the Word of God to get a hold of you, and it won't let go. You can't shake it. On, you run. You run to the ends of the earth like Jonah did. You run from God's Word that you'll find yourself in the belly of the whale in the depths of hell at the bottom of the ocean. And God's Word is still there. The Bible says if I make my bed in hell, you are there. Mm -hmm. That's right, brother. Mm -hmm. God's Word. Mm -hmm. That's right. God's Word. It'll accomplish what it said it'll do. That's it, brother. Amen? Amen. If we just let it out. Yeah. And listen to me. If it's good enough for you to speak about, but it ain't good enough for you to act on or stand on, you ain't got much. That's it. Amen? Come on. Put your money where your mouth is. Amen. Don't just talk about God when you're in church. Right. Don't just talk about Jesus on Sunday morning. Come on. But let people know that you know Him. That's right, brother. Let people know that need an answer that you got the answer. Come on. Amen. That's right. And listen, I ain't talking about going and just hammering them over the hedge and do more yeah. harm than good. Yeah. But if you'll let your... Jesus said, Who 
lights, on, who lights a candle and then sticks it under a bushel? Right. But no, they take it and they put it on the lampstand. Mm -hmm. So it'll give light to all that are in the house. Right. If we'll do that with God's Word, That's it, brother. don't take it home and hide it. Right. All companies coming over hide that Bible. Yeah. I don't want them to know I got that. Mm -hmm. Hide our light. Mm -hmm. If we'll let it out. Let it shine. All right. Let the Word of God become part of us. Roll on the tables of our hearts. Share it with the world. It'll change yes, not sir. only you, but those you come in contact with. Amen. Amen. That's true. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You can build your life on the Word of God. That's right. You can trust the Word of God. That's right. Amen. Come on. You can trust it. You can build on it. You can rely on God's Word. It That's will it. see you through. Come on. It will see you through. Come on. When you buy a novel, mm -hmm. the finish has already been written. You can't do anything to change that. Mm -hmm. You can tear the pages out and throw them away, but still, the author that wrote the original <laughs> manuscript, the ending is settled. Amen? <laughs> already been written. Promise. Already been finished. Mm -hmm. Already settled. Mm -hmm. You can't change it. True. Stand on it. You can rest assured that God will do what He said yes, He sir. will do. That's right. Somebody else this morning have something before we go.